All right, so um, conservative Kevin McCarthy, he's going to explain for us what he thinks the two greatest threats to the United States are. This is kind of hilarious. Let's watch it, and then I'm going to rip it apart. And that, then what we'll find as well, as no one's asked me about, when's the debt ceiling coming up? Well, the debt ceiling's coming up much faster because all the Democrats voted for that $1.9 trillion bill that had less than 9% going to COVID. So yeah, that's a much higher debt, faster. And the two greatest threats to this nation is China and our debt. And they're spiraling in both directions by not holding them accountable and continuing to waste money of what they're spending it on. So he says China and the debt are the two biggest threats to the U.S. <laughs> imagine believing that. Seriously, imagine believing that. China and our debt. Now, by the way, if you talk about, hey, there's an issue with China because our corporations and our owner class decided to come up with terrible trade policies that have made it so we have a race to the bottom in the U.S. and we outsource good middle class jobs to China. If you make that point, you know what I say? Full agree. That's exactly right. But I don't blame China. I blame the corporations and the owner class who have bought our government and then our government is doing their bidding as opposed to the bidding of the people and the workers. China is, they're ancillary to the broader problem because you could outsource the jobs to China or Bangladesh or Malaysia or somewhere in Latin America. You, you could do that. Are we blaming those countries? No, it's not their fault. It's the fault of the corruption and the fault of the corporations and the politicians. So I don't like, and by the way, that's not even the point he's making because this guy's for outsourcing jobs. He's a free trader, you know? So his point is, China, in terms of, like, they're threatening us as the sole imperialist power. Okay, well, there shouldn't be imperialist powers, but if you're gonna give in to that paradigm, then be fucking smarter with how you approach this. They're doing the Belt and Road Initiative and getting people to like them, and we're bombing everybody and their grandma, and then we're surprised that they don't like us. These guys are fucking dense, man. It's amazing. But China's the biggest threat to us. The debt is the biggest threat to us. Every time it's a Democratic administration in power, Republicans are always like, the debt! Oh my god, the debt and the deficit. Oh my god, the debt and the deficit. Meanwhile, when Trump was in power, he could spend like a drunken sailor and they're like, sweet, bro. See, we got the economies being stimulated by the spending. This is great. We got a great economy. Yes. So they didn't talk about the debt. They didn't talk about the deficit. They voted for legislation that increased it massively. You know, Rand Paul claims to be the biggest deficit hawk of them all. He voted for the package. The 2017 Republican tax cut bill, 83% of the benefits went to the rich. It added massively to the deficit and they all voted for it. Like, oh my God, this debt and deficit. You guys voted for all the wars. You guys voted for all the tax cuts for the rich. You guys voted for corporate bailout after corporate bailout, whether it's the Wall Street bailout or whether it's the CARES Act pandemic-related bailouts. You voted for all that. You don't get to vote for all that and be like, this fucking debt is fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? How did this happen? Biden should not do anything ever and should tank his own administration so we could win. There's such charlatan fraud hacks. China is not the biggest threat to us. The debt is not the biggest threat to us. By the way, economists will tell you, we control our own currency. We have a sovereign currency. So doing deficit spending is not the same thing as a household doing deficit spending. It's not the same thing. And if you think it is, you're just wrong. Um, there's this lie going around too. 9% of the bill was for COVID. The rest of it wasn't. That's... That's so weaselly, because obviously everything is in one way or another, whether it's primarily or, or in, in an ancillary way related to COVID, of course. If you're helping somebody because of pensions, well, yeah, the pension fund was depleted because we needed funds in order to fight COVID. So you give money back to the pension fund. He would say that has nothing to do with COVID. Why? Because it's not directly spent on the virus, but it's spent in a way to help regular people who were impacted as a result of the virus. That doesn't count? They would say, no, it doesn't count. Because they're weaselly hacks. God, it's so frustrating. Because they're just dishonest. A lot of this is just dishonest. It's not like an honest disagreement. Um, and again, economists will tell you, you're supposed to spend in a downturn. We had a pandemic. We had a downturn. You're supposed to spend. You're supposed to do a stimulus package. The government is supposed to be the spender of last resort. Um, so anyway, what is actually the biggest threat to us? I Listen, I'm not going to score it, but I will bring up things that are definitely bigger threats than China and the debt. Corruption, which leads to almost every single problem we have. War, both the endless wars we're currently engaged in, creating enemies all around the world, but also the potential of some sort of accidentally nuclear, accidental nuclear catastrophe. Of course that can happen. 
Like, we created nuclear weapons. We still have nuclear weapons, and a lot of the main players in the world stage are kind of permanently, uh, you know, in tension with each other. That's not a good thing. That's not a good place to be. You know, like, that seems like a huge problem. Oh, by the way, with like a couple well-placed weapons, we could destroy the entire planet. How does that not hop the list over the debt to you? Are you kidding me? Climate change is a huge problem. We got a story later on in the show. You're going to be like, whoa, I didn't know it was that bad. Just wait. Um, I would argue even artificial intelligence is a bigger problem because when it comes to... Now, we can harness it for good, but we're probably not going to do that because we have a corrupt system and we're not planning things out in an intelligent way. So like Stephen Hawking said... You can have the robots take over, and 90% of the population is going to get fucked and left behind, and then you're going to have massive unrest. That's a problem. Poverty, homelessness, these are bigger problems and all the shit he's... Anyway, I don't know why I'm bothering to try to respond rationally to this moron and this disingenuous liar, but nonetheless, here we are. He says China and the debt are the biggest problems, biggest threats to the U.S. The biggest threats are corruption. We're our own biggest enemy endless war, some potential accidental nuclear catastrophe, climate change, artificial intelligence, taking all the jobs, poverty. These are the real problems, and I think that this stuff is just downright silly that he says.